okay uh, let's start uh, so today's lecture i don't think it will be much challenging than the one that we discussed uh, in the last one that we discussed the financial position and i would say if you're clear about mostly the financial position like 65 70% of that was covering the consolidation and the remaining 30 35% is this profit or loss because this is if you understand that chapter basically you know all the basics like the unrealized profit and intercompany balances all those things so if you're clear about that this is just a piece of cake to remember okay right we will be, we will be spending uh, most of the time for practice as well today and i'll try to do uh, as much questions as possible from the cap and kit of both financial position as well and for profit or loss as well Okay. okay now there are some things that we need to see from the study text as well but before that i will uh, focus on these notes i will just like yesterday i will explain you the meaning of each and everything over here and after that uh, yeah actually there is one more thing as well but let me explain first this one that i'll give you 2 3 minutes more there there is just this working one that you need to write but that we'll cover uh, just in a short while okay let's first discuss this so first of all as you can see that uh, this is the profit or loss statement and in the profit or loss what happens is that uh, it's not a financial position we are just writing all the revenues all the incomes and we are netting off with all the expenses right and the difference is basically the profit or the loss for the year okay now as you remember the normal sole trader financial uh, profit or loss statement this is very similar to that but again there are some differences because we are making it from the uh, group perspective right now not from a single company anymore so first of all over here as you can see we have revenue revenue is basically sales right now sales yeah. what we do is simply we write parents uh, sales and then the subsidiary share and then we minus the intercompany balances okay now why are we minusing the intercompany balances because yesterday i told you that every kind of intercompany receivable payable sales purchase we have to minus it from here okay so parent plus subsidiary and we are deducting the intercompany sales from here these will be given to you in the question right now mm -hmm. apart from that as you know from revenue we take out cost of sale so we minus cost of sale and then we have gross profit so cost of sale calculation is also very similar now we don't follow that formula anymore like the opening inventory plus purchases minus closing inventory that was just to explain cost of sale but over here you will be readily uh, given with the available figure that you will have to use okay so parent share plus the subsidiary share again this is basically minus intercompany sales okay don't think it has purchases this is the same figure as this one the intercompany sales so we have to minus it from the from here as well and we have to add the unrealized profit now for unrealized profit if you remember we had the double entry that i told you yesterday what we do is debit we do cost of sale and credit we do inventory because we have to take it out from both sides and it has an equal effect over here right that's mm -hmm. why we uh, directed in it inventory and now we are adding this in the cost of sales okay right now uh, this is basically minus and then we have uh, got the gross profit over here now any kind of other income like the rent received interest income received dividend received any kind of income is written over here and that is also simply parent plus the subsidiary so nothing special over here now in expenses it's also very simple the good thing over here is that we don't have to you know learn the whole like the financial position yesterday we studied the whole of current assets and non current assets then working four working five working three all of that the messy things are not over here right but the thing is that this is connected to that topic if you're clear about the financial position uh, things then you're automatically clear about very much clear about this as well okay now other expenses includes the admin cost these are just some examples it has in actual terms it has many more expenses it depends on the uh, question requirement okay so admin cost interest expense which is finance charges then operating expenses electricity expense heating expense and so on let the list goes on okay now in this as well what we have to do parents plus the subsidiary that's all nothing else there is no third person over here just these two okay we add all these and basically the sum of these is deducted over here you can see now this is deducted from the gross profit and finally over here the highlighted figure you can see either it's a profit either it's a loss okay so profit or loss is showed at the end of the period over here this is the group one not the individual one so this is the group profit or loss for the year 
Okay, right. So this was very easy to understand. There is nothing difficult in this because we are just netting off the income with the expenses. There are no complicated things over here. Now, uh, please take two three minutes and just write this one, this working one. Let me highlight this. This is just this one. Uh, this working. And when you write this one, let me know. I'll explain you the meaning of this as well. Okay. Yes. Sorry, subsidiary uh, profit times NCI percentage equals to NCI share of profit. Yes, yes, exactly. So okay. are you done writing this? Uh, when you're done, I'll explain this, don't worry, okay? Okay, done, this one, just, okay. yeah. Yes, yes, sure. So you, you just have to write the working one. Uh, the rest things I'll explain over here. These are just for explaining over here. Now, what happens is that uh basically what we have to do is that as i told you yesterday as well that now the subsidiary is owned by two companies the parent as well and there is some form of nci as well depending let's say if parent is purchasing 80 percent of subsidiary then the other 20 percent is called the nci the non-controlling interest yeah. okay now yeah. obviously non-controlling interest we cannot ignore over here because they still have like a significant part I would not say significant, but still 20% is something, right? It's something. So something is better than nothing, right? So what happens is that they are the owners of 20% of the share of profit of the subsidiary as well, because they are still owning it. They are not forced to sell their shares. They are still owners. Yes, there are little, uh, very little in, they're not majority, but still there is 20%, right? So what we have to do is that we have to divide the subsidiary profit into NCI and the parent. Okay, now this, please note, this is subsidiary profit. Please don't confuse it with this profit. This is basically the group profit, okay? So group profit, this one is group profit. And working one just we do to divide the subsidiary profit. Now subsidiary profit will be separately given to you in the question. You will not have to calculate that. Only this one, always remember, this is the group profit. This profit belongs to parent as well and the NCI as well. We have to now apportion the only the subsidiary. Profit. Where does it go? Sorry, uh, the subsidiary profit. Where does it go? Uh, it's I mean, just it's just there for the calculation statement. purpose. In the statement, this goes nowhere. We are just having it for the calculation part, just for the working one, right? So it's not to be confused with this group profit because this group profit is separate, right? This is calculated in a separate way. Uh, so is it just the percentage of the? Yes, yes, exactly. So just the percentage of it, the NCI gets over here. Okay. Now, what is the formula over here? Don't worry, I'll explain it in the questions as well. And we'll go in a short while. So what we do is that's the subsidiary profit. Now, this is not that one. This is not the same as this one. Again, this is a group profit. We don't have to take this profit. This is separately given in the question that let's say uh, yesterday we did a question of the parent and subsidiary. The subsidiary profit will be given separately in their statement. Okay, right. Now what we do is subsidiary profit multiplied by NCI percentage. Let's say NCI was 20% over here. And let's assume the subsidiary profit was, let's say 20,000. 20, okay, so 20,000 multiplied by 20%. This gives us the figure of, uh, I think, 4,000, uh, 4, right? Yeah, I think this will be the answer. So 4,000 is the NCI share of subsidiary profit. Because obviously, NCI is also owning some part of subsidiary, right? Now let's see this example as well. I've explained it over here in the diagram as well. Let's take this example. This is a subsidiary. Now the same thing, it is owned by NCI as well and parent as well. Let's say 80% is owned by parent, the majority, and 20% is just owned by NCI. Now let's say for the whole year, just the subsidiary separately, I'm not talking about the group over here, just the subsidiary separately had $10,000 of profit. 
okay now according to the percentage we have to simply divide it right it's very easy to understand now theoretically parent owns 80 percent right so 80 percent share should go to parent that means 80 percent of 10,000 will be 8,000 right and 20 percent the other 20 percent will belong to the nci that is 20 percent of 10, yeah. and this will be two thousand dollars okay so okay. this from this diagram you can also get this this is very easy to understand okay mm -hmm. right and over here it's the same thing the subsidiary is divided into nci and parent so okay. the same thing. and this is the yesterday's kit question just ignore this this is just from the last class okay now mm -hmm. over here this is basically the working to this is also not relevant okay so this was basically the whole uh profit or loss uh the format that we have over here okay it includes the working one as well right and this profit or loss statement as well now apart from the working one what we do is the separate thing that is included in the study text now what we do is that we move to the study text and let's read it from there let's read the remaining so can, from I, there. can I ask you something yeah yeah um, on the you know admin cost interest cost if you go on the statement yeah mm -hmm. or is okay sorry i didn't write down uh, parent plus subsidiary sorry sure 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 you can write it don't I worry was take just, it you know i was asking if it was for the parent or okay it's for both so, yeah exactly no problem done okay great great now actually i was explaining you yesterday i think in, it was in the day one class or day two class of consolidation because this is the day three of consolidation so i was explaining a concept called mid-year acquisition and that is more a more serious approach towards this profit or loss because i told you at that time as well that it's not much related to financial position right we just have to keep acquisition date and reporting date in mind but for profit or loss it's more important why is it important let me give you a small example now you remember that profit or loss the full word over here when i made the sole traders profit or loss the normal statements not the consolidated one i wrote the full word over here as for the year ended right so profit or loss statement for the year ended let's say 31st december 2021 okay so this was basically for the 12 months you know this as well that profit or loss is made just for the past the prior 12 months it doesn't it's not like financial position so the only difference in financial position and profit or loss is that financial position is reflecting as at right the word over there was as at as it means like we are standing right now at this point of time what is the financial position so let's say the companies has been trading for last 10 years so it's not just for 12 months it's for the whole 10 years till this date till this date that we are standing right now that was financial position right but for profit or loss this is just for the year ended that means just for the 12 months because it's practically not possible to show the whole 10 years profit and it will not make sense because companies have to grow better each year right each six months each year they have to be better in profit profitability percentage everything so that's where this is a figure that is measured each year every year okay right so that's why the mid-year acquisition concept that we will study from the study text in just a while that is more important towards this chapter towards this profit or loss okay now let's move towards the study text and this is chapter 22 profit or loss and associates this has a small part of associates as well so we'll study this as well okay now so a lot of things are same as the financial position like i told you that if you study financial position it will be 80 90 percent clear and this will just be a small just a piece of cake for you to understand okay now let's read it from here because we have to cover these things as well now the basic principles let's see this so consolidated profit or loss the consolidated profit or loss follows the same basic principles as the financial position again it's the same thing there are fewer adjustments and they often reflect the profit or loss perspective of adjustments already dealt with for the consolidated statement of financial position so a lot of things we have already like uh, have a looked at before right so let's see some examples like add together the revenues and expenses of parent and subsidiary right now this is the part that i'm talking about this is just the introduction this is the mid-year acquisition concept okay now let's read this carefully if subsidiary is acquired part way through the year let's say the year the full year is first january till 31st december right this is the full year 
let's say the parent purchased subsidiary <laughs> somewhere over here at this point and let's say at this point it was first april right so it's basically explaining that the subsidiary has been with us just for these nine months not for the first three months over here right so yeah. we will ignore these three months what we do is for every subsidiary item not the parent item for every subsidiary line item we'll do everything nine over 12 because again the reason is i just explained to you two minutes ago that profit or loss is made just for the 12 months not for the whole 10 years let's say okay so uh, that's why will this be happening also with the assessment of financial position no 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 no, no. not for the financial position just only for the profit, for the profit. And loss. yes 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 exactly just for the profit or loss just the mid year acquisition concept in financial position was just limited to the acquisition date, reporting date, just knowing, just keeping the dates in the mind. Okay. We don't have to apportion anything over there because that's already a portion. We are looking as at over there, as it means at this point in time, right? But this is not in this point in time. This is just for the last 12 months, which is a fixed thing. We cannot change it, right? So we have to do everything for the subsidiary we have to do. In this example, nine by 12, it can be four by 12 as well, five by 12 as well, depending on the situation. Okay. So if subscription okay. is acquired part way through the year, all the revenue and expenses of subsidiary, not the parent, just the subsidiary must be time apportioned during the consolidation process. The so same thing that I've explained over here. Now, mm -hmm. eliminate intra-group sales and purchases. We have just looked at the format of profit or loss in sales. We also minus right? in cost of sales. We also minus. Right now, third thing, eliminate unrealized profit in held in closing inventory relating to intra group trading. So also we took out the uh, unrealized profit that was basically adding it back. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll do one thing in the next class, I'll further explain it about why the unrealized profit is, you know, why this statement is like we add in the cost of in the inventory. I'll explain it just a little bit more so that you are more clear about that. It's a little long okay. concept, but I'll try to make it easy. Okay. Now, fourth one, calculate the profits attributable to NCI, which we have just looked at the working one that you have just drawn. Right. So the NCI is given the separate profits of the subsidiary and subsidiary profits are given to parent as well. They're divided between the two. Okay. Right. So this was just the introduction. Now the same working is over here, right? If possible, if possible for you, Please also adjust this one as well, because right now we have just, this was a working one basically. Okay. This was a non-controlling interest profit. So what we do is NCI percentage multiplied by subsidiary profit, right? This one. And if you have space or if, if it's possible in the notes, please write this as well. NCI percentage of the unrealized profit is also deducted from here. But the condition over here is that only subsidiary is a seller over here. That means in short form, the subsidiary is selling to the parent because this working is for subsidiary, right? Not for the parent. There is nothing regarding parent over here. So if subsidiary is selling to parent over here, only in that case, we will minus the unrealized profit in this case. Uh, sorry, can you, um, can you explain again? Because I was just, I was. Yeah, sure. sure. Uh, know, if you first, uh, have you written this, this second thing over here? Uh, no, yeah, just one moment. Okay, first, uh, please write this, then I'll explain it to you, okay? Because first thing we've already discussed in the notes, just add this one line over here, which is just deducting the unrealized profit. Okay. Okay, done, written. Okay, that's great. Yes. Now, what happens is, that you can see this working that we do. This is just add on working in just the profit or loss. This is just done for the subsidiary, right? This is just belonging to the subsidiary, not to any other. Yeah. It does not have any parent item. We are just apportioning mm -hmm. the subsidiary profit into non-controlling interest. That's why we are just deducting the unrealized profit if the subsidiary is the seller. Because if subsidiary will be the seller over here, only in that case it will be it will having the profits over here it will be the owner of the profit, right? So we will have to minus this if the subsidiary is seller. If parent is seller, we just have to ignore it. But this happens in very rare circumstances, right? Mostly just you have to do this first one, but still we have to keep an eye. If this thing happens, we have to deduct it from here. 
Okay, right. we'll see this in the illustration as well. Ah. Let me just want to start. Okay, right. Now let's do this illustration. Let's see what it has asked. So over here, this is again just for understanding purpose. Again, don't expect that you will uh, be asked to make in the exam the whole statement. This will never happen. Okay, this is just for explanation purpose. Prepare the consolidated statement of profit or loss for the year. Now you can clearly see this is like a proper question for the profit or loss. However, it can, it will not come in the exam. This is just for understanding purpose. Just that, just for extracting the concept. Okay? Not even in section B. No, no. In section B, you will be given with the whole statement, but just two or three things will be missing. And that okay. also requires like uh, basically doing the MCQ type stuff over there. Okay, because okay. those the each requirement will be maybe two marks, three marks. That's all. Okay, and okay. it will be a group of two, three questions. So the total will make it 15 marks. But this is just for understanding purpose. You will not have to draft the whole statement in any exam. Okay. Now, parent and subsidiary, as you can see, these are the individual uh, profit or loss statements. This is not combined. We have to combine it. We are the accountants. We have to combine it. Now, these are not combined. These are separate over here. Right now, you can see that profit or loss for P and S are given separately. Now, P acquired 75% of ordinary share capital of S several years ago, so it's going on for several years. Okay, now what happens is that we just studied the format for profit or loss. Right, let's look at the answer what it has done exactly the same thing will happen over here. Okay, first of all, you can see it's written revenue. Now, if you take the revenue of parent and subsidiary 1200 plus 400, which is 1600, right? So it has done the same over here. You can see 1600 is the answer. Okay, parent plus subsidiary. There was no intercompany sale. If there was an intercompany sale, we had to deduct it from here. Okay, same goes for cost of sales as well. Now, cost of sale 1080 for parent and for subsidiary is 360. Right, so the total makes it 1440, 1440. If we minus these amounts, we get the gross profit. Right now, after that, the admin expenses same as given above 75 for parent, 30 for subsidiary. So it makes it 105. Right now, after we minus this, this is profit before tax. After we minus the tax, these are basically all the expenses. It's step by step minusing all the expenses. Okay, so 15 for the parent, 6 for the subsidiary, again 21. Okay, now the whole profit is 34. This is the group profit. Okay, now I am practically explaining you the use of working one, right? That we just studied in the format as well. Now, working one, if you remember, it is called profit attributable to NCI. It's written over here as well. Subsidiary profit attributable to NCI, right? Working one. Now, let's see what it has done. This is the working one. So attributable to first, let's look at non-controlling interest. This is working one. It has done working one over here. Let's see. So NCI's share of subsidiary profit for the year, that is NCI percentage multiplied by subsidiary profit, not this group profit, not this one, the subsidiary profit. Now, where will you find the subsidiary profit? You can see it's given clearly over here. This is four, basically 4,000. These three zeros are taken common, right? So $4,000 is the subsidiary profit. This was what I was telling you that subsidiary will be given separately in the question. Okay, right. Now for what we do is how much percentage it acquired 75%, right? So what will be the NCI percentage 25, right? The remaining one. So 4000 multiplied by 75, it will sorry, multiplied by 25, it will give us $1,000 over here. Okay, now this is the profit that will be going to NCI, right? And the other profit out of this 34 will be going to the group. Group basically includes the parent and subsidiary, and this is just belonging to the NCI. Because see, what happens is that NCI is not owning anything for the parent, right? Parent is different, NCI is different, subsidiary is different. There are three parties over here. Right. So group basically has two parties, parent and subsidiary. NCI is not part of group because group means the controllability, the more than 50%. Right. And NCI is separate, the separate percentage. So what we have to do is apply this working, this working one that you just wrote down. We have to 
multiply the NCI percentage with the subsidiary profit, not the group profit. And then we have to minus it from the group profit because 1000 belongs to the, to the NCI rate and the remaining one, which is 33 from this 34, 33 will be going to the group over here, right? And one will be going to the NCI in this case. Okay, so this is what we're doing over here. Okay. Right, got it. Now, let's also look at the same things that we studied yesterday, but the implications, the treatment of it is a bit different. different sorry, right? Now, intra-group trading again, this is the unrealized profit, the inter-company sales purchases. Okay, now you can see from the sales, what we do is parents revenue plus sales revenue, subsidies revenue minus intergroup sales, right? And in consolidated cost of sale, parent cost of sale plus subsidiary cost of sale. Now the reason I was telling you minus the sales from here, minus the sales from there, the intercompany sales, because you see intercompany sales and purchase mean the same thing. It does not have any difference because for one company, it will be purchased for the other one, it will be the same. Uh, for the sale the amount will be the same over here right if 400 is purchased and the sale for the other so it basically means the same right so in easier terms you can understand it minusing the intercompany balances either it's sale either it's purchase yeah it's, it's always minus the, the intercompany right yeah yeah exactly in every case yeah. because the goal yeah. over here is to eliminate it okay yeah okay so over here so if you're wondering what the whole word means, the what the P means, P-U-R-P, -P, it is basically provision, called, but it's not anything to learn over here. You can call it U-R-P, you can call it just imaginary profits, you can call it U-R-P, unrealized profit, anything. Okay, but the full form of this is provision of unrealized profit, P-U-R-P. -P. Okay, now, if any goods traded between the parent and subsidiary are included in closing inventory, their value must be adjusted to the lower of cost and NRV. This we studied in the IES2 already, right? So adjustment of unrealized profit should be shown as an increase to cost of sale. Why we are increasing cost of sale? It has given just a glimpse of an information over here. You see, what is the formula for cost of sale? Opening inventory plus purchases minus closing inventory, inventory, right? So that means that closing inventory still has the intercompany sales and purchases. Opening will probably not have, but closing still has, right? So it has been minus over here from cost of sale. So this is the reason why we added back in the cost of sale, okay? And because it is included in the inventory, right? If we are looking at, at uh, the financial position perspective, it is added in the current assets right so that way we are just minusing it from the inventory so it's taken out from inventory and it's added back in cost of sale why is it added back because it's included in the closing inventory right and closing inventory gets minus from here from the cost of sale now we have to add it back to basically eliminate it this is the logic behind this it's very simple okay right so everything is connected with each other like just links and chains are with each other in this topic yeah i just need to link them like in my brain as well yes 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 exactly that's right okay now let's do illustration uh the example for the unrealized profit as well let's see this one again it is same like the above question right so on 1st january 19 p acquired 60 percent of ordinary shares of s okay now what will be the nci percentage over here 40 percent Right? Yes. The following statement of profit or loss has been produced. Okay. This is the separate one. We have to combine it. We have to consolidate it. Right. Yeah. Now, during the year, uh, P had sold, parent had sold 42,000 worth of goods to S. So this is the intercompany sales and purchase. Right. These goods had a cost to P of 28,000. Right. On 31st December, 2019, S still had half of these goods in inventory at the year end. Now, this is the explanation. This basically goes on for financial position as well and profit or loss as well. It's the explanation of both. I'm basically telling you how to calculate the unrealized profit that we have to add it back in the cost of sale and deduct from the inventories. Okay. Now, without looking at the solution, let me first explain you. So yesterday I told you that unrealized profit is calculated as a percentage of remaining inventory, then inventory that is still remaining, right? 
the main mm-hmm. keyword was remaining over there now let me tell you the formula how we calculated okay let's take a look at this example how much was the inter company sales 42000 now who sell how who sold it p company right the parent company is selling it that means who is the owner of the profit over here parent company right so mm-hmm. which inventory will get lo- lower parent companies or subsidiary companies parent companies because parent company is the owner of profit over here okay one second okay now let's see this is the cost sorry this is the selling price which is 42000 right and how much did it cost to parent company 28000 right that means how much is there actually a profit in this sale 12000 right that's right this is the total profit but what we have to do is in the unrealized profit we have to just multiply the profit with the remaining inventory the inventory which is remaining right so you can remember the formula like this unrealized profit is equal to the whole profit multiplied by remaining inventory remaining inventory percentage you can remember it in a short form like this if you want to write it you can then yes please you... okay yes just going to okay sure sure you can write it after that we'll discuss okay so now sorry the 12 thousand mm-hmm. to to multiply that one by the percentage exactly yes the whole profit basically the profit of that transaction the transaction mm-hmm. therein we just multiply it with the remaining inventory percentage mm-hmm. okay right now let's do this let's do this one so profit over here have you written this this formula yes Okay, 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 great. Now twelve thousand is the profit. Now let's see what is the remaining inventory percentage. Okay, now S company still had half of these goods in inventory, so it has told that only fifty percent, or in other words, just just half is available, right? So what we do is one by two, or just fifty percent, simply, right? So that means only remaining profit we can eliminate. We cannot go to the customers that S company has sold out the goods, and we cannot chase them because no one has such time in the company, right? This was the explanation. Mm-hmm. Now twelve thousand fifty percent is six, right? So six thousand is the unrealized profit over here. So we have understood the calculation of this. Example. Now this is the amount that we will add in cost of sale and deduct from the inventory. This six thousand, okay? Because this was the unrealized profit. Now let's see. It will oh have done. Cost of sales and deduct from. Uh, let me write it over here. Add in the cost of sale and deduct yes. from the closing inventory. Okay. So closing inventory regarding the statement of financial position and cost of sale regarding the profit or loss. Okay. Right. Got it. Yes. Okay, so if you want to write anything, you can write, and let's yes, see the. Yes, I've already done okay. it. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Now let's look at this uh, solution as well. So you can see that it has done the same thing over here, right? Now, selling price was sorry, sorry, sorry. I did one mistake. This was not twelve. I should have calculated it. Sorry, it was fourteen thousand. Okay. okay. This, this was not twelve. So formula is right. This the calculation is wrong. This is fourteen. This is fourteen, so fourteen into one by two, it is seven thousand. Okay, so seven thousand will be the unrealized profit. Okay, so you can see the same thing it has done over here. It's just a very complicated approach. Just remember this formula that I've told you about, right? So same thing it has done. First calculate profit, then do profit multiplied by remaining inventory, right? So seven thousand is the remaining uh, unrealized profit, right? So you can see that it has just having the effect on the cost of sale right so cost of sale it is added over here it is doing plus 7 okay now why is it doing minus 42 because th- this 42 was basically uh, 42000 was the inter company sales so it is to be deducted from both sales as well and cost of sale as well, according to the formula okay, okay right? so e sorry 
Okay, so those are the cells, 630 and 260. Yes, yes, yes. This is the parent cell. This is cells, yeah, okay. And, this and is the cost of cells, 210 and 105. Yes, this um, is basically, this is the formula. Parents plus subsidiary minus intergroup purchase and plus unrealized profit. So parent plus subsidiary, this is minus the intercompany, right? And this one is the unrealized profit. The formula is same of cost of sale and revenue. Just in cost of sale, we are adding back the unrealized profit. Okay, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Just according to the formula okay. that we have just studied in the notes. Yeah. Okay, now let's see this mid-year acquisition as well. Let's see what it has discussed because I just told you it is much more serious over here. It was not it was not serious in financial position. This topic is more important over here as well. But uh, just give me 30 seconds. Let me plug in my laptop charger. And after that, we'll discuss this. Okay. Okay. Okay, now let's read this, uh, this topic seven, what it is saying, let's read. So mid-year acquisition procedure. So if subsidiary was acquired part way through the year, then subsidiary's results should only be consolidated from the date of acquisition. That is the date on which uh, it was purchased or we can say control was acquired, right? In practice, this will require time apportionment, which we just studied, of the results of just S company not the parent company, just the S company in the year of acquisition. For this purpose, unless indicated otherwise, assume that revenue and expenses accrue evenly. Accrue evenly means that we are giving, we are getting the permission of using the pro rata basis or the apportionment basis. Okay, so we have to use that in every question in which there is mid-year acquisition. Okay, now after time apportioning, subsidiaries results Reduct the post acquisition intergroup items as normal. So just do the normal consolidation after doing the uh, mid-year acquisition process. We'll discuss this in this example as well. Okay. Note, however, that accounting for items for other comprehensive income in the group statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income are excluded from, okay, this is not the part, just ignore this. So OCI will be a part in probably F7, not in this case. Okay, now this is again parent and this is subsidiary, right? Now this is a pure like question. Again, this is just for understanding purpose, but this is just more than enough for understanding the mid-year acquisition concept. Okay, now this is the main thing over here. Let's read this point. On 30th November, 2018, parent acquired 75% of ordinary share capital of S company. Now, or at what date it, it is purchasing? 30th of November, 2018. What is the year end? 31st March, right? Mm -hmm. Now look, this is the 31st March, 19. This is the 12 months, like the whole uh, full year, right? It will start on 1st April, 18, right? This is the full year. Now, this is purchasing the subsidiary, not at first April, not at first April, on 30th number. That means somewhere in between here. So obviously, it is a mid-year acquisition. Now, let's count the months. So let's see. November has passed. So December, January, February, and March, only four months are on this side. Right? Mm -hmm. And the remaining eight months, we don't have to consider because we purchased after this date. This is the date that we'll consider this time period. Okay, so for every subsidiary item, what we have to do is 4 by 12 for everything. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, right. So this was the media acquisition concept. Now let's read further. No dividends were paid by either entity. Okay, it doesn't matter. The investment income is from listed investment. Again, this is advanced thing. Just leave this. The profit of both entities are deemed to accrue evenly. So that means we are given the permission of doing this pro rata basis. That is to charge uh, the subsidiary items evenly, right? To basically apportion them on month basis. right now you can see over here it has done the same now this is revenue first of all revenue parent one is full right obviously it will be full now this is subsidiary one multiplied by 4 by 12 right same with cost of sale parent is full subsidiary multiplied by 4 by 12 right operating expenses parent is full subsidiary multiplied by 4 by 12 right so everything just for the subsidiary is being multiplied by just the amount of months that we have acquired during a year the other ones will not consider okay right got it yes okay now let's discuss this this is like one of the last things um let's discuss this is a little bit theory right and this also can come in the exam but we just have to understand this we don't have to remember anything over here okay now this is basically uh, called is28 no need to remember this this is just telling the treatment of associates remember we studied associates associate was one which had significant influence significant influence means that the investment percentage is just between 20 and 50% remember on this first day we studied this so that means we are just having some kind of influence like let's say if we are owning 30% of shares out of 10 directors we can appoint 3 right or in other words we'll just they'll just hear us opinions and uh, the point of views they will not they will take decision according to the parent because parent is the ultimate one over here that will make decisions but we they will just hear us right our opinions will heard in front of the board of managers okay so this was a meaning of significant influence now an associate is identified sorry defined as an entity over which the investor has significant influence so this thing we discussed that as well joint ventures are not part okay sure now significant influence is power to participate in financial and operating policy decisions so it is just being participate right of the investee but it is not control or joint control over these policies again nothing to remember just we need to remember that we just we just need to understand that sub significant influence what happens is we just have to have the power to participate nothing else in this case our point of view will just be heard but the decision making will lie with the parent company okay right now investor is an entity which owns shareholder in another entity investee is an entity in which another entity has a share holding yeah so this is basically the bifurcation investor obviously you know that if i am owning a company investor is my shareholder right who will invest invest money right investee is the company which is giving itself for ownership right so this mm-hmm. is the connection between them now this percentage we have already looked so whenever there is associate the percentage lies between 20% and 50% the percentage of holding okay, okay. now principles of equity accounting and reasoning behind this let's see this as well equity accounting is a method of accounting whereby investment is initially recorded at cost and adjusted for any post acquisition change like if there is any kind of you know market value change we are just that so equity accounting happens in case of associate this is again talking about associate because same chapter is going on right now this effect or uh, the effect of this on the consolidated financial position is this one 100% of assets and liabilities of parent and subsidiary entity line by line basis a single investment in associates line with uh, within non current assets which includes the group share of the assets and liabilities of any associate so the working six that i was uh, explaining you that day right let's discuss in the, in the next class because it has a little bit of theoretical things right the the less we discuss the profit and loss the more chunks we create it's better and that will be the only concept that's left so equity accounting it's talking about the associate i would not suggest to you know uh, pay attention on this right now i'll make sure to cover it in some other class and this is again a working for that this is basically working 6 right oh again God. you can see uh, working 6 equity accounting 
all these things right so only one or two pages we just have to read it in the next class and this profit or loss statement was the chapter was still here there is nothing more in this case okay now we'll take a short break right i'll try to keep the class within like one hour 15 minutes or let's say one hour 20 minutes right uh we'll just take like 20 25 minutes more we have to do the questions and after the questions we will probably wind up the class okay let's take a